Hi there, Maria. So you've written another set of essays. Great. Let's take a look at what you did here. Okay, the first one is crop production in Brazil. It's a short one. Now, sometimes these pie charts that are very simple are actually even harder to do than the ones that are more complicated. So let's see how you managed with this one. The given pie chart features the production of crops, plural, in Brazil in 2017. The pie chart contains information about the relative proportion of yields, S, for each crop type. Now, here's a good opportunity for you to mention what those crop types are. You have one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's a good opportunity for you to mention them here. In fact, I generally recommend this because um, all of these titles, all of these crop types are actually considered key information. So if you happen at some point to neglect to write about one of them, uh, that's a real problem. So even if here in your introduction you at least mention them by name, you um, are doing yourself a great favor here, okay? All right, so moving on. As the chart illustrates, some types of crops, plural, were produced more than others. For example, the yield of rice was nearly the quarter of the total crop production in Brazil. You're starting with rice. Let me see if I understand why. Hold on, let me just make this bigger. Okay, you're starting with rice because that was the highest figure. That makes sense. All right. Um, nearly a quarter here, a quarter of the total crop production in Brazil in 2017. Along with rice, sugar, and soya had the relatively larger, here you want to say larger, you want to use a comparative form here to show that you're comparing it to the ones that were not as large. So had a relatively larger, had relatively larger proportions of the total crop. So S produced last, hang on a second, I gotta start the sentence again. Along with rice, sugar, and soya had relatively larger proportions of the total crops S produced that year with almost equal 23.2 and 22.1% respectively. That almost equal, as you could see from my hesitation, kind of confused me. It doesn't sound quite right. Um, you could have said with an almost equal amount of this and this respectively. That would have been better. In contrast, the proportion of wheat produced was just under 2%, thus making wheat the least grown crop in 2017. Interestingly, barley is the second least produced crop. However, its yield is almost twice as big as that of wheat. Additionally, one-fifth of the total population was made up by corn. Finally, the crop production in Brazil is dominated by sugar, soy, and rice. These three crops made up, made up, here's what's missing, the up, nearly three-quarters of the total yield the given year. Okay, Maria, so what I've done is I read your whole answer again, and I've also looked at the pie chart, and I'm trying to see what you could have improved and what was good. So, um, my biggest problem is here, you talk about right that it was nearly a quarter of the total prop production. Now, when I see nearly, I feel like it must be like, okay, it's probably around 23, 24%. But looking at the data again, rice is actually over a quarter. So you could have said that. So, for example, the yield of rice was over a quarter of the total prop crop, I can't say that word today, crop production in Brazil in 2017. Now, this is what really confused me. Along with rice, sugar and soya had relatively larger proportions of the total. So this was confusing. Um, the way you phrase it here, along with rice, and then you had these other two, and I didn't know what these figures went to. You could say, okay, well, Ellen, I've already told you that rice was over a quarter. It was still confusing. Okay, so there was a clearer way to say this. Um, then, I like what you did here. You started with the low numbers. That was fine. So you started off with the really high numbers. Another thing that I think is really worth mentioning, 
is that these three together made up almost three quarters of the total crop production. Okay, and the remaining three made up just over 25%. I think that's worth mentioning. Okay, you had six crops in total, three of them made up 75% of your total crop production, and the other three just um, completed a little over 25% of your total. I think that's worth mentioning at some point. That's a kind of comparison that I think um, examiners find interesting. Okay, because otherwise that's what like um, a big picture comment would be. Uh, whereas, you know, you don't want to focus so much on details like, oh, 25% of this, 25%. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Okay, um, I like what you did here though. However, I did have a little problem. So check this out. You say here, um, the proportion of wheat produced was just under 2%. Okay, that's true. And then you said barley is the second the second least produced. However, its yield was almost twice as big as that as wheat. No, it's not. It's much more than that. It's like over three times. Okay, in fact, uh, you could potentially argue that it's almost four times. I haven't done the math, but I think it's pretty reasonable to say that it's almost four times. It's somewhere between three and four times. So this is actually inaccurate. Okay. Um, you can do the math. You can try it out. So it's three to four times as great as that of wheat. Um, and then you say one-fifth of the total production was made up of corn. One-fifth. Well, yeah, almost. Almost one-fifth. Okay? So again, here what I think is really worth saying is that together these three crops make up just over a quarter of the total prop, crop production. Okay? That's some important um, information. Uh, and then this here was was fine. You said what I wanted you to say. All right, we spent quite a bit of time in your task one, so let's move on to your task two. Pollution, the reasons for it, and um, the solutions for it. Let's see. It is undeniable that air pollution is one of the biggest issues in densely populated cities. It has been proven that air pollution vast amounts of s of which are produced by privately owned vehicles negatively affects the lifestyle of the city residents and may cause long-term health problems with an over increasing size with the over increasing size of a typical city just a typical city comma you don't have to say agglomeration such as beijing or new delhi l h okay it becomes natural for its inhabitants i n to opt for a private vehicle although a personal car provides extra comfort you don't need to put a dash here to its owner it also creates congestion no the within the city roads and therefore generates traffic problems indeed comma numerous cars on cars on the roads translate into a significant reduction in air quality within a city within a city not a city in question just within a city full stop this is due to car engines emitting various pollutants which further settle into the lungs of the city residents therefore what what's the takeaway from this maria what's your conclusive statement linking back to your first sentence okay it's just part of the template that you have um worked with in the course, so remember to add that here at this point. Various actions have been undertaken by environmentalists and politicians to solve air quality problems, plural. However, the key solution was proposed by urban designers and city planners. As research, as research shows, air pollution can be reduced by the introduction and development of public transport, coupled with increased parking costs in the city center. Firstly, emission, there's a double S here, Emission-free transport, like trams and trains, are capable of transporting a larger number of passengers, with an E, without air quality reduction. Secondly, additional parking fees along with a paid entrance to the city business district could eventually make car owners choose, without the two, in favor of public transport. Okay, again, think template. How do you end this paragraph? What's a nice way to kind of link everything back to the initial statement in your paragraph? 
All right, moving on. Although the above described solution to air quality problems uh, S or to the air quality problem may appear radical, there are examples of cities where it has given fruitful, well, you don't give fruitful results. I guess you provide or you, you show fruitful results. I'm trying to think of what a better word would be here. Amsterdam, as we know, is one of the most car-free cities in the world, all thanks to the smart decisions made by the government at a critical point in this city's history, apostrophe Fs. Okay, um, it was fine until you got to this sentence. What you end up doing here with the inclusion of this statement about Amsterdam is you're adding new information and you absolutely don't want to do that in your conclusion. The conclusion is just a, pl for a place for you to wrap things up, not develop anything new, okay? If you have any new information, you should absolutely put it in your body paragraphs, but not in your conclusion and not in your introduction, okay? So on the whole, this is nice. It's good, it's lovely, it's got a lot of good things going for it. It's got a lot of, um, structure that is appropriate. It's got a lot of grammar and vocabulary that are appropriate, um, but we do need to correct some of the errors that I have mentioned um, along this video correction, okay? So go ahead and correct them. Correct your essays, return them to us corrected. Don't forget to add your error correction list so that you can refer to it and improve upon these errors. And of course, we'll be also waiting for your next set of essays, okay? Go ahead and uh, get a start on those, and we'll be looking forward to them. Alrighty, good luck to you.